message in this Living Generously trilogy of messages. Today I ask you to pray with me around commended to your true inheritance. Commended to your true inheritance. Today we consider the text from Acts which describes Paul's parting words to the Ephesian elders. May we bow our heads for prayer this morning. Almighty and gracious God, God of our mothers and of our fathers and our God, now send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us now so that the words which are heard and the words which are spoken may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days. These things we ask humbly in the mighty, precious, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. And I heard the church say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Beloved, an old story is told of a wealthy man getting on in years who called in a faithful employee who'd been with him a very, very long time. He gave the trusted employee some surprising instructions. He said, I'm going on a world tour and I'll be gone for a year. While I am gone, I want you to build me a house. I've already purchased the lot. And here's a check that will cover the entire cost of building. I want you to take this money and build a nice house. Draw up the plans yourself and do it extremely well. I'll see you when I get back. The old man departed and the employee went to work with shrewd Purchasing, somebody say shrewd. Shrewd purchasing. The employee cut corners at several points in the construction process, Carl. Uh, the employee used inferior materials at every opportunity, especially at places where they would not be easily noticed. Finally, the house was completed. The employee had produced a beautiful exterior shell that covered a shoddy piece of workmanship. The employee had lined his pockets, and lined his own bank account with several thousand dollars that he'd saved from counting corners, and from, from cutting corners, excuse me. After all, the old man would never know the difference. <laughs> And the old man was rich enough to never miss the money. So what if the house wasn't constructed well? So what? The first day back from his trip, the old man wanted to see the house. So they drove over to see it together. You may have wondered why I wanted you to build this house, the old man said. After all, I already have a nice house. Yes, I did, the employee admitted. Well, said the old man beaming with pride and his spirit filled with generosity. You have been my faithful assistant for all these years, so I wanted to find a way to show you my appreciation. Here are the keys. The house is yours. Yes, yes. Oh, there is joy in our hearts like the old man had, y'all, when we're able to show generosity. And sometimes an inheritance, beloved, can, can surprise and even delight us. Amen? Not like the case of my friend, Cousin Dan. Amen? Sometimes in this world, inheritances are not good news. A lawyer was, was reading out the will of a rich man to people mentioned in the will. To you, my loving wife, Rose, who stood by me in rough times as well as good times, I leave you the house and $2 million. 
uh, lawyer continued to my daughter Jessica, who looked after me in sickness and kept the business going. I leave her the yacht, the business, and one million dollars. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Somebody say that's all right. The lawyer concluded, and to my cousin Dan, who hated me, argued with me, and thought that I would never mention him in my will. Well, you are wrong. Hi, Dan. <laughs> his, his, his was not good news. <laughs> Amen. Every now and then, beloved, an inheritance can surprise us and delight us, though. Story also reinforces a powerful lesson, doesn't it, from last week's text. For in this week's story, you reap what you sow can make sense, too. For the trusted employee had never seen the old man give somebody a house before, but that didn't mean the old man couldn't. Come on, somebody, right? So perhaps once the house belonged to the employee, there would have been some changes made to the workmanship. Amen. This morning, as we close out our stewardship campaign, live generously, you're invited. You're invited to think like the old man was thinking. With that house that he wanted to give away. The old man was thinking of inheritance and legacy. Think of what the legacy of your gifts that you'll give in 2019 will mean. Perhaps in 2019, those gifts will help us to venture out into places we've never been on the Internet or the World Wide Web. Perhaps your legacy with the gifts you give in 2019 will mean that we're able to continue expecting that recipe of those wonderful things that you prepared for Thanksgiving dinner to go to someone else that someone else might be able to, to be able to provide the green bean casserole for the loving folk in their home, amen? You'll share the recipe and won't keep it to yourself that we won't have to wait all the way till next year. Amen. Next, next time in order to enjoy it. Perhaps your legacy in the new year and the legacy of your gifts will mean a ministry in the United Church of Montbello will continue strong. Perhaps your legacy will mean you're teaching someone else that a pledge really does matter of one person. We live in a time and in our country where people even believe with their vote that one person can't make a difference. Well, here at the United Church of Montbello, I assure you, one person can make a mighty difference. This morning, with the parting words of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian elders, it's important to note a number of things that I hope you'll take home with you it says, and now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. Your true inheritance is the inheritance you get from a loving God who gives to you eternal life. Your true inheritance is the message of grace that Paul proclaimed so profoundly throughout the letters of the Apostle Paul. The true inheritance you receive is the inheritance that helps you receive it. And, and as you receive it among all who are sanctified, it makes you and it makes us as believers want to give, want to share. So Paul went on. He said, I've coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I, I've worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. Paul 
pouring out his heart. In all this, he goes on to say, I have given you an example that by such work, we've got a job to do. Your legacy within the work of this church means we're able to do our job to support the mission of the church, to encourage and support people to become believers in and followers of Jesus Christ. Does that mean for us supporting the weak? Yes, yes it does. Does that mean for us remembering the words of the Lord Jesus? Yes, it does. Does it mean for us remembering that those words shared by Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive really matter? Historians and theologians and those who take the text critically have looked to find those very words of Jesus in the Gospels. Why? Because the gospel, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, the gospels are about the life of who? Jesus. Jesus. But there is only one place in scripture that we find those words connected with every stewardship campaign ever, anywhere, usually. Amen? It's more blessed to give than to receive. It's attributed to Jesus, but don't we serve a Jesus who's great enough to have said some stuff that scripture didn't capture too? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, we did. Amen. Didn't we serve a Jesus who's majestic enough and marvelous enough to do some things in your life that are both in your plan and maybe some things in 2019 you ain't planning for? God can bless it. God can see you through. Amen. When he had finished speaking. Oh, Paul knelt down with them and all of them prayed and there was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. Paul helps us with something else that's important to remember today. There's a mother this morning who, whose pain is that she lost a son last night, uh, Thanksgiving night, excuse me. She lost that son because it seems from the news reports, someone robbed a store in a mall. And like most moms, she said, it wasn't my son. But she was right. It really wasn't her son. Her son was tracked down by the police in their local jurisdiction, not because he was the one who robbed the store, but because he was the one who looked like the guy who robbed the store. And not only was he shot dead, but the pain seared in my heart as she said, he was also shot in the back. Part of that mom's pain today, part of the pain she'll face in weeks and months and years ahead, perhaps even until the time that God calls her home, part of her pain is that she was not able to say farewell properly to her son before he left this world. What Paul did for the Ephesian elders, he does for all of us. I close with the, 
the marvel of what he does for a sacred few in your life you will have the chance to craft your farewell you will be able to say goodbye to them because of the cadence with which they will die and when that time comes and you're wondering where you can turn to you're wondering, how do I do this properly, Lord? And perhaps you're praying and shouting unto the Lord. Where is it that I can learn how to say the right things and do the right things? Treasure this text. Mark this text in your Bible. Dog ear this page. <laughs> Put these verses in your hopper. <laughs> because Paul teaches us what a great farewell really is, y'all. First, notice that he commended them to God. To commend them means he was committing them to God. He could have said, I commit you to God. He committed them to our creator who loves us most and best of all. Don't forget to commit your, your loved one to our God. Notice how he moves from commending them into reminding them how much he loves them and how much he loved them. I coveted no one's silver or gold or or clothing you know for yourselves I work with my own hands people who work with their own hands beloved work because they love the work love the people for whom they're doing the work he reminded them and you will remind that loved one that you loved them and that you love them now then he encouraged them did you notice that first you commit then you remind them that you love them. You, you commit them to God first. And then you remind them that you love them. And you love them. And then you encourage them with Jesus' own words. Remembering the words of Jesus. It says. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You commit. You remind. And you encourage them. What's so marvelous about this text is that then Paul did not forget to pray. And praying is where the tears came. And praying was not just for Paul himself, but the opportunity was offered to the Ephesian elders too to pray. Wouldn't be Paul's final ship voyage. It would be near his last but surely he was beginning the path when they parted. The path that would lead to the very day that he'd die. He taught us the essential parts of a great farewell in saying farewell to the Ephesian elders whom he is shown to address in this way only this once in the book of Acts. When he finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him. Don't forget the intimate time you can offer. The time of embrace and perhaps kiss as well.
every farewell will not be yours to craft. But for the few that are, here is the way. Your true inheritance, the mercy, the grace, the love, the eternal life, the joy, the forgiveness. Inheritance from God gives you a legacy to share. Don't forget both movements of the spirit. Inheritance leads to sharing. The more generously you do it, the better people get to know you. That your eulogy might really look like something noteworthy that people may really stand up and say nice things. Wouldn't that be great? When I die, they said something nice. Hallelujah. Your true inheritance gives you a legacy. Are you going to keep it to yourself? Or are you going to generously share it? That's your final question. Thank you for all the ways that you already do. Thank you for the ways that you will in 2019. Take this final text as your instructions to how you'll craft the farewells that you're in charge of. It's got it all. May it bless you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank and praise you for you teach us how to be fully fulfilled, loving and caring Christian people. You teach us if we would but regard your word most highly in our lives. You teach us. You use your word, oh God, to challenge us and to ennoble us, to move us through the deepest, darkest times in our lives, and to lead us back into your glorious light. Now use these precious words of yours with your precious people again, that we might craft final farewells that make you smile and show the regard for our loved ones that they deserve. Allow us, O oh God, to be your people, not just now, but always, and wrap us in the wonder of your love. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. And we all said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's rise. Let's rise, beloved. Let's rise. song says Ooh, I need you you need me we're all a part of God's body stand with me agree with me we're all a part of God's body it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive